Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and what I have in front of me here are a pair of wartime commercial C96 Mausers with shoulder stocks. And what we're going to do today is take a look at how to assess these for authenticity and originality. These pistols have, uh, well they're very distinctive, they've developed quite a significant collector following, and they bring a lot of money. And so I think it's it's very relevant for someone who's interested in getting one of these to be able to get a, a good idea of how do I look at one and determine what am I actually looking at? Is this a $500 gun or is this a $5,000 gun? So we're not really going to talk about specific prices. What we are going to do is look at how do we identify what is original and what has been replaced or reworked on a gun. So let's dig right into it. The way we're going to structure this is that I have a good example and a poor example. We have a pistol here that has pretty much everything right, and we have a pistol here that has a bunch of problems with it. And the same for stocks. We have a good stock, and we have a not so good stock. Uh, first off though, I do want to mention that these are both 7.63mm Mauser caliber pistols. These are not uh, the quote unquote Red 9. However, these, there are actually more of these in German military service than Red 9s, and I think that's something a lot of people maybe don't recognize. Certainly these have substantially less market value than Red 9s, and for the historically interested collector, that offers a really good opportunity. Uh, you don't have to buy a Red 9 to have an authentic World War I German military used broom handle Mauser pistol. Uh, so specifically what we have here are both wartime commercial guns, or that's what they're typically called. Serial numbers on these run from approximately 290,000 to approximately 434,000. So there's almost 150,000 of these guns that were made, and the majority of them are in fact military proofed. Uh, in fact I'll show you this little crown marking right here on the right side of uh, the barrel extension is a German military acceptance mark. So that's what you would look for, both on the pistol and on the stock. Some of these were also uh, acquired by and issued by the Austrian military, in which case you would see a, uh, actually you'd see the same mark that the Austrian military put on uh, all of its other guns, which is a WN for Vienna, um, and a two-year date stamp. So either one of those, if you find that on the pistol, um, that indicates German or Austrian military use. Now that we have an idea for the history here, we can move on to actually evaluating a couple of examples. And to be clear, the things that we are trying to identify are guns that have had parts replaced, parts reworked, or parts refinished. Uh, as a, a military historical collector, those three things are all kind of anathema. We want guns that are in their original unmodified condition. Now quality or condition will of course vary. You can have a completely original gun that is just a pile of rust because it was left out in the field for years, or you can have a completely original gun that is in perfect like new factory condition. And those both have validity. No one's really all that interested in a complete pile of rust. But what we don't want is a gun that was in poor condition and has been artificially restored into better condition. So. Uh, let's start by looking at the most common wear points of the gun. So a broom handle Mauser was not issued with a leather holster. This holster stock combination was in fact used as a holster. So when you slide that pistol in you're going to typically wear on a couple of specific places, and even when the gun is locked in the holster they generally have a little bit, well this one's actually nice and tight, they'll often have a little bit of rabble, rattle and wobble to them that will result in wear on the gun. So, starting at the front we would expect to see some wear on the muzzle. By the way, these guns, uh, because of the bluing process, the, the crown here, right at the face of the muzzle, is always going to be in the white. So right off the bat, if that's blued, someone has redone the barrel. Then we should see some wear, or we would expect to see some wear on the bottom of the barrel, because of the way that it slides into uh, the hole in the bottom of the holster stock. We should expect to see wear on the front of the magazine well, in particular this lip at the bottom because it protrudes. Uh, that's one of the main points of contact between the gun and the holster. The front of the rails right here is going to become worn on both sides. We should expect to see some wear here on the bolt stop because that's another protruding surface that's going to uh, rub against the holster. 
and then there will usually be some wear on the front and back grip straps, um, not from rubbing in the holster, but just from handling. So uh, sort of a different style of wear, but you'll often see uh, problems with the finish there. So this gun is a good example of how you should expect to see wear in these areas. You can see that this is very nicely finished up here, and on the toe that protrudes you've got wear on this bottom corner, and then the wear extends between both the, the frame here and the front of the magazine floor plate. So this is an original floor plate, and it's been on there the whole time. So when this rubs in the holster, it's rubbing on both parts. These pistols were all hand fitted, so you'll notice that uh, where the floor plate fits into the bottom of the frame here is very nicely flush. The surface of the floor plate is flat, uh, it's not curved down, it's not dished down at the edges as it would be if someone had been polishing it so that they could refinish it. Uh, this is what the floor plate fit and wear ought to look like on a C96. Compare that to our not so good example here. Notice that on this guy, the floor plate is one color, and the toe of the frame magazine well here is a substantially different color. This is indicative of a replacement floor plate. Obviously this wear did not happen while this floor plate was in the gun. And if we look at the bottom, you can see that the, the fit of this floor plate is pretty poor, and the reason for that is it was originally hand fitted to a different gun. We can also take a close look at the back, right in here. Notice how the edge of the floor plate is rounded down into the gun. That is because someone polished the finish off of this floor plate uh, and then refinished it. And as is easy and typical to happen, they got a little bit exuberant at the edges, and so you no longer have a perfectly square edge. This is particularly clear when you look at both of them side by side. One other element, and this is, this is not a definitive thing, but as uh, authentication is generally a practice of looking at a whole lot of different features and coming to a conclusion about all of them put together. Notice how on this original floor plate the polishing marks are at an angle, kind of in this direction. When people tend to polish parts after market, they, they generally just kind of naturally do it in parallel lines. So the polishing on this floor plate is arrayed parallel to the bore, and that's not something you would typically expect to see on an original. Now that's not to say it can't happen on an original, um, and if it does, and there aren't any other indications of, of refit or refinish or fakery, that's fine. But this is just one more little notch on the side of this gun has had parts replaced. Moving further along on this line of inquiry, if we go ahead and remove the floor plate, we should see a serial number right in here on the floor plate. And there is none, and the reason for that is whoever put the, refinished this floor plate and put it in the pistol polished off the serial number so that it wouldn't look like it was mismatched. Wartime commercial C96s do in fact have numbered floor plates, and this is from our correct gun. You'll notice it has the serial number, where this one does not. Now some of the earlier Mausers would have uh, numbered followers as well. Wartime ones do not have a numbered follower, so there is no need to look for a number on that component. Now let's move on to a different part of the gun. Let's look at the bolt stop. This one looks really nice, like that's a gorgeous fire blue on that bolt stop. The problem is we've got heavy wear points on the rails here, but that bolt stop is immaculate. Let's take a look at the other gun. For a gun that has some wear, that is what we would expect to see, wear on the high point of the bolt stop. So someone has refinished the other bolt stop, and you can see this again more clearly. When we put them side by side, notice that the flat surfaces on the front here, on, on the unmodified original one, that is a nice perfectly planar surface, with a little bit of wear on the corners. The refinished one here is slightly rounded down at the edges. It's not a perfect plane, and that's because this was polished with something more akin to a hand tool or being handheld where when it was originally manufactured it was held in a completely steady jig with a fixed machine tool 
actually making the cut. So that's something to look for in general on a lot of parts. Look for the edges to be rounded down, look for surfaces to be a little bit wavy because they've been polished by hand, instead of perfectly flat like they were originally done on the production floor. Taking a step backwards for a moment, I do want to point out that of course one of the very first things you should do is look at the visually accessible serial numbers. The major parts, which is to say the main the grip frame, the internal frame here, and the barrel extension, these will all have the full six digit serial number. Of course six digits for these wartime guns, earlier on they were five digits. Uh, and then your small parts, things like the hammer and a lot of the internal parts, will have the last three digits of the serial number. Now serial numbers can be faked, uh, numbers can be removed and remarked so they look like they're matching. We'll look at an example of that in a moment, but this is just your obvious basic first step in assessing one of the guns. A couple other things to look out for. For one, check the barrel, make sure the barrel isn't bulged. It doesn't happen all that commonly, but it absolutely does happen. It's easy enough if you're in the middle of World War I to accidentally plug the bore with some mud, not realize it, fire around, and bulge the bore. So the easiest way to determine that, to find it, is just run your fingers down the length of the bore, and you'll be surprised how easy it is to feel a bulge in the barrel if there is one. Um, this, they, these can actually be fixed in a couple of ways to be aware of. Um, believe it or not, barrels can actually be pressed back down to remove a bore, and if that's done really well, you can't even tell. However, some people will also take a barrel off, mount it on a lathe, turn down the external diameter so that there is no uh, apparent bulge, refinish the barrel, which is often uh, identifiable, you can tell when the barrel's a different colour from the rest of the gun, and then if, if this has been turned down on a lathe you would still be able to see a ring in the bore on the inside. So again, not something that happens all the time, but something to be aware of. And take a look at the lanyard rings. Lanyard rings are something that are fairly regularly removed because people who aren't collectors who owned these guns at some point may have found them to be annoying um, and gotten rid of them, or they, they can get lost on their own. Um, but a real one will look like this. If you look at how, how closely spaced the ends of that ring are, that's what it should look like. That is basically someone's key ring. So that's not correct, that is correct. Be aware of the difference and uh, check those out. When we look at the extractor um, we should expect it to be pretty well fit. Note how the lobes fit into the bolt body there. Uh, and the extractor, as with uh, we talk, when we talked about the bolt stop, the edges of the extractor should be perfectly square. Um, this one has a little bit of wear on it right there, which is not unusual, um, and it is a little bit wavy front to back, and that just comes from use because this is getting um, forces being put on this all the time. What you don't want to see is one that's wavy side to side, like so. This extractor is an example of one that has been messed with. Note how you can see the polishing lines side to side on here. Um, the colour is not quite right. Notice that the fit of these lobes at the front isn't very good. That would definitely not have been the original extractor in the gun. Uh, and at the edges they're rounded down just slightly, again from someone polishing and then re-bluing that part. Now you would want to take the gun apart and check the serial numbers and the condition of the internal parts. And yes, even if you're at a gun show or at a shop, if you're going to spend a couple thousand dollars, or even a single thousand dollars on a broom handle mauser, the seller is should be expected to allow you to disassemble the gun. If they don't, don't buy it. Um, that, that's not an out of line request, especially for a gun that is this easily or this commonly messed with and this expensive. Now I've pulled the grips off here. Um, these grips on, on our not so great gun are actually just fine. This is what you should expect to see. Both grip panels will be numbered with uh, the last three digits of the serial number, and the inside of the wood will be unfinished. So we'll see this on the stocks in a moment, but the outside of the wood is finished, the underside is left raw, and to be honest, not necessarily all that nicely cut. These kind of look a little crude compared to what some people uh, would expect, but that is correct. One last thing I want to touch on briefly before we move on to the shoulder stocks 
are these markings, not just here, but also on the top of the, the barrel. These markings right here, what you see is how this would have come from the factory. They're not colorized, they're not filled in, and they can be a little difficult to see. That is correct and normal. A lot of people will fill them in with something like a white wax pencil, like you see here, because in reality this makes it look a lot better, it makes it a lot easier to read, and it just really looks very good. However, you should recognize that this is not original factory. This is done for photography's sake, mostly. Uh, do not ever put extra value on a gun because the, the lettering has been filled in like this, and uh, don't, don't think that it detracts from the actual historical value of the gun if the lettering is not filled in. Now this doesn't actually harm the gun in any way, it's just wax, it is easily removable should you want to. But uh, don't, don't make the mistake of giving it extra value, because it does make the guns look better. Alright, so that covers our pistols. Now we need to take a look at the shoulder stocks. We again have here a good shoulder stock and a not so good shoulder stock. And uh, let's actually start at the front with the locking lug. When these stocks were made, the lugs were hand fitted individually to each gun, and so the wood may have, have uh, swelled over time, but generally you should find the lug flush with the wood or slightly recessed in. Um, over time the stocks tend to kind of grow up and over uh, the lug, they don't tend to creep away from it. So that is correct good fit there. This one not so much, it's okay in the back, but notice up here at the front uh, the wood is, is pulled a bit down and away, and even more so on this side. That, it, this is a lug that has been refitted to this gun, and it's actually been renumbered. The way that these lugs were originally polished was first the numbers were stamped in, and then the front pin here was assembled in place. This is for the spring catch that holds the thing on the pistol. And then the lugs were polished crosswise, this direction. And you can actually still see those polishing marks on this lug. This one, however, you can see the polishing marks run front to back, and if you look closely you'll notice that uh, the edges of that 211 number are sitting up a bit proud. This was polished first, and then someone re-stamped uh, the serial number in it. And this was done to make it a matching stock, which it is not. That's a, a faked stock. That's relevant because having an original matching stock, uh, what you would call a complete matching rig, adds a substantial amount to the, to the value of the gun. So it is worth people's time, or they think it's worth their time, to fake these to try and get that extra value. And if you're going to fake the lug, well you might as well put in some time and, and put some work into the hinge as well. So this has been re-blued, but it's actually pretty well blued. The colour on this, I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera because it changes with different lighting conditions, but the colour there is kind of about what you would expect. However, if you look at the screws, uh, they, they all have that slightly dished appearance where someone took these screws and put them on the lathe or on a, a turning wheel to polish down the tops before they were refinished, and the file that was used has a tendency to kind of come up onto the side of the dome of the screw and then drop down into the slot and then pick back up on the other side. And what that means is that the screw slots uh, are, are slightly dished out or slightly beveled on the inside. Correct original screws don't have that effect. And this, this example is a little bit more worn. You can see the finish is, is in far worse condition, but this is actually original and those screws have not been messed with. Now these wartime stocks, this is the hinge uh, pattern to look for. Some Mausers will have loops on here for attaching to, uh, to belts or something. These were all designed to be held in uh, leather holding rigs, and so they don't have any extra loops on the hinge. One brief note, we have a German military acceptance mark right there on the stock. If your pistol has that mark, your stock also should have that mark. When we open up the stock there are a couple things to look for. The first is, just like the grips on the pistol, the outside of the wood was finished, the inside was not. And the inside is it, it's left raw, and again the workmanship is not as, as precise and clean as I think a lot of people would expect. This is correct and original, and that's how it should look. You might have some oil discoloration in here, you might have a little bit of bleed over of the stain, just 
down over the edge, but you won't have an actual finished surface here. In addition, the wood was not necessarily heavily polished, and if you run your fingers across an original one, you can still get a feel for the grain of the wood, um, especially on this side. You can see that, and it is just barely tactile. This stock, however, has been sanded. It's been uh, refinished in a number of ways, but you can see the difference here. This one's been sanded down, and you can also feel the difference. The screws have been refinished, as has, in fact, all the hardware on this has been polished and refinished. This one is fitted to a military accepted pistol, but there's no acceptance mark here. So it might have been a non-military stock, or you know, those stamps are very small that might have gotten lost in the polishing. When we open it up, you can see that the inner surface here has been stained and finished, and that is incorrect. In addition to looking for whether something has been um, artificially refinished, of course, it's also very relevant to know what the general condition is. These stocks are relatively fragile, and there are two particular places to look for damage. One is between the screw and the button and the latch. This is a place they tend to crack, and you can see this one has cracked in that area. And then here, down the, the bottom of the stock, that's where there's a cutout for the front sight, and that's also a fragile area. And if we look at this one, you can see that there is a crack right there. It has been repaired, but it wasn't repaired all that well, and there's still some blobs of glue that you can see inside. Uh, needless to say, an original uh, unmodified stock will not have blobs of glue in it. So wrapping this up, putting this all back together, this particular rig is completely original. It has a little bit of wear to it. You can see that the, the fire, you know, the nice shiny blue on the stock hinge is gone. There, there are wear points on the gun itself. But this is, this is honest wear. This is how the gun appears after, uh, well, a hundred years of existence and going through a world war uh, issued to the German military. Um, this is a really nice example of a 7.63 caliber military uh, accepted wartime commercial C96 Mauser. This one, however, is not quite so honest. This is a gun that originally had some problems. It may have been missing the floor plate, the floor plate may have been damaged or very heavily corroded, and so someone decided to replace the floor plate. Um, they replaced the extractor, probably for the same reason. Um, they did actually polish on the back of the bolt. I didn't mention that, but if you look at something and it's all brightly polished, but then there's just a pit in the middle of it, well, Pits don't just happen like that. Uh, this means that the back of this piece was corroded and it's been polished up um, in an effort to hide that. It has then also been fitted with a stock that is not original to it, may or may not have actually been a military stock. Um, the lug has been actually not just repolished and refinished, but actually renumbered, um, which kind of takes an extra step above and beyond cosmetic fixes um, to pure out you know, pure fakery and, and fraud trying to change the number on that. So this is the kind of gun that you want to be aware of, and if you want to buy it, that's fine, especially if you want a shooter, but you should be aware of its actual uh, condition and pay for it accordingly. If you only take one thing away from this video, it should probably be spend a lot of time carefully investigating uh, the stocks and the stock lugs, because a matching rig will put something like a 50% premium on the price of one of these pistols. And you want to really make, make sure that you're not dumping that kind of money on a gun that isn't actually legitimately originally matching. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the video, and I really hope that this proves valuable to those of you who are interested in especially getting started in collecting uh, pistols like the Broomhandle Mauser. A lot of what you've seen today does transfer to many other styles of pistol. Of course the specific details will vary, but the concepts of what you've seen here uh, are more universally applicable. So uh, ultimately the best way to be able to authenticate guns like this is to have a wide experience in looking at a lot of examples. And over the course of doing that you will develop a, a feel, a, just kind of an understanding of what's right and what's not right. But until you have the opportunity to look at a bunch of guns, that can be really difficult to do. So like I said, hopefully uh, you enjoyed this first step in the process. Thank you very much for watching.